connection to this deal came through James Gillier, who's an English businessman who you, correct me if I'm wrong, you had met while doing business in various different countries. You talked about doing deals. Then on Christmas Eve 2015, he sent you the following text which explained the deal with China that he wanted you to become part of. And I just want to read the first sentence of this. There will be a deal between one of the most prominent families from the U.S. and them constructed by me. Yes, that's correct. What, tell me what he was saying. So James Gillier was referencing something that he had been working on throughout 2015 with Rob Walker and a Chinese company called CEFC. And he had... Uh, been traveling around the world developing that deal, and that text was just the culmination of him making me aware that the deal was moving forward. It was never about Hunter Biden or Jim Biden. It was about the family name, the Biden legacy. At this point, Joe Biden was the sitting vice president of the United States. Yes, that's correct. Welcome back, everyone. By now, most of you have seen the blockbuster Tucker Carlson interview with the career naval officer and former Biden business partner, Tony Bobolinsky. Now, this guy was tapped by the Biden family to be the CEO of a business venture with communist China. This is a big deal because, for one, Joe Biden has denied ever having any involvement in his brother or son's business dealings. Because I've never discussed my business or their business, my sons or daughters, and I've never discussed them. Not only was this guy part of Hunter's business dealings, but they had tapped him to become the CEO, and he had multiple meetings with both Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and his brother, Jim Biden. There's a paper trail, or rather verifiable email and text message exchanges. It's all there. If you haven't seen it, go watch it when you're done here because the media is just going to completely avoid this story like super aids. That's what we're going to go over in this video, the five most damning moments that the media will completely ignore. Before we dig into this interview, give me just 30 seconds for a quick capitalism break to thank this episode's sponsor, Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. After 20 years old, your body will naturally decrease its collagen production by 12% each passing decade. This is a leading reason as to why skin appears thinner and more wrinkled as we age. It's essential for skin, bones, and more. And the way to keep our skin looking healthy and youthful is by consuming five different types of collagen. Ageless Multi Collagen provides you with the five types of collagen your body needs and one complete protein. Get Ageless Multi Collagen for 51% off plus free shipping by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by clicking the the link in the video description box below. All right, let's just get right into this. At one point in the interview, Carlson brings up Bobolinsky speaking to Rob Walker, who is a former Clinton administration official, about talking to the Biden camp about retracting their claims that all these accusations are nothing more than Russian disinformation. Believe it or not, being a career naval officer and having a history of service to this country, he didn't appreciate Democrats like Chuck U. Schumer and the DNC media pundits smearing him and his service. Why wouldn't he? They're baselessly accusing him of being a Russian traitor. Which is really funny because I thought criticizing veterans was out of bounds. And now they're accusing this one, without evidence, mind you, of essentially being a Russian agent. <laughs> Silly me, it's different when they do it. The Biden family knew that you're going public with this. And you spoke to Rob Walker about it. Again, the, the self-described Biden family representative. And Biden family, meaning Joe Biden as well. What was his response when you let him know that you were going public with this? Trying to coach me. <laughs> Trying to sort of say, hey, we don't want to do that. We don't want, you know, press trucks out in front of our house. I'm going to have to move. Uh, I could lose my job. Um, and uh, all that, um, you know, I'm not trying to cause any harm to anyone in this situation, right. let alone Rob Walker and his family, James Gillier and, uh, and his family. Um, but basically, Rob's position was if you go on record with all these facts, you'll bury all of us. If he doesn't come out on record, I am uh, providing the facts. Tony, you're just going to just you. bury all of us, man. I was focused on pushing these guys to do the right thing. 
to demonstrate an ounce of integrity in front of the American people. What the hell? It's right there on audio. Tony were to come out to the American people and tell them the truth that it would bury them all. How utterly insane is this? This is not Russian disinformation. We have the audio recording right there. Can anybody imagine in their wildest dreams that if the media had this kind of information about the Trumps, that it wouldn't be front and center everywhere, every single day leading up to the election? I mean, at the very least, the media needs to investigate this, but we all know they won't because they're riding with Biden. Next, we have this damning detail from a chat that Bobolinsky had with Joe Biden's brother, Jim, in 2017 in regards to these business dealings with Hunter in China. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about the Biden family, like, how are they doing this? I know Joe decided not to run in 2016, but what if he ran in the future? Aren't they taking political risk or headline risk? And I remember looking at Jim Biden and saying, how are you guys getting away with this? Like, aren't you concerned? And he sort of he looked at me and he laughed a little bit and said, uh, plausible deniability. He said that out loud? Uh, yes, he said it directly to me, one-on-one -on -one in a cabana at the Peninsula Hotel, with me asking out of concern, how are you guys doing this? Aren't you concerned that you're going to put your brother's you know, future presidential campaign at risk? The Chinese, the stuff that you guys have been doing already in 2015 and 2016 around the world. And uh, I just can almost picture his face where he sort of chuckles and says, you know, plausible deniability. So he said this is a man who's been drafting off his brother's political career for almost 50 years. He said to your face, essentially, we're, we're lying about it. Uh, uh, anyone uh, watching this interview can look up what plausible deniability means, yeah. and the uh, definition is very distinct. Ah, yes, plausible deniability. I talk about it a lot on this channel. It is a crucial tool of the DNC press and corrupt government cover-ups. The Bynes know that they have total and complete cover by the media, and that's exactly what Jim Bynes is flaunting during this exchange. At the very least, CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, MSNBC should all be asking for an interview, but they won't. Why? Because they have plausible deniability in their Russian disinformation excuse. Next, we have another damning accusation from Tony that the media will definitely ignore at all costs. Tony's belief that the Bidens are in fact compromised by China and actually present a national security threat to this country. What are the implications of this going forward? If Joe Biden is elected president, which could very well happen, Asking for my personal I opinion? I am. I'm asking for your opinion as someone who's worked with the Chinese. So I think Joe Biden and the Biden family are compromised. Um, obviously, I've referenced that I held a Q clearance. You're briefed on compromise and, you know, who you're able to talk with and deal and do business with. And uh, I just don't see, given the history here and the facts, how Joe can't be um, uh, influenced in, in some manner based on the history that they have where, here with CFC and stuff like that. So it's at this point that there is so much documentation, and again, we have your documents, the ones that you retain, the text, the emails, yeah. and the legal documents, but presumably there are many others because there are a lot of other people involved in this. Is it possible that this stuff just disappears and nobody covers it for the next four years if Biden's elected? I mean, it seems like there's a lot of evidence out there. Um, I think the American people should be demanding that this is investigated. Now, isn't this the very thing that our media is constantly wringing its hands about in regards to Trump? That he has a lot of debt and that might mean he's compromised by Russia. Wasn't that exactly their fear in the Steele dossier that they reported on from the day that Trump was inaugurated and then for the next few months? The dossier that supposedly proved that Trump was compromised by Russia. Which, by the way, we now know was Russian disinformation compiled by a Russian spy that had been designated a national security threat. They really do accuse their political opposition of what they are actively engaged in. James Gillier was referencing something that he had been working on throughout 2015 with Rob Walker and a Chinese company called CEFC, and he had... Uh, been traveling around the world developing that deal, and that text was just the culmination of him making me aware that the deal was moving forward. So he, he doesn't say, I want to do a deal with you and me and Hunter Biden, or even you, me, Hunter Biden, and Jim Biden. He said, between one of the most prominent families from the United States. He's talking about the Biden family. Yes, that's correct. It was never about Hunter Biden or Jim Biden. 
was about the family name, the Biden legacy. See, now this is another important detail because it shows that it wasn't just about Hunter, but rather the Biden family at large, the Biden name. They were using the Biden name to secure lucrative business deals with communist China. How does that not compromise Joe Biden as president of the United States? Or hell, as vice president, because guess what? He was still in office when this was going on. There are also emails that have been confirmed by Fox News between Tony and James Giller, who is a consultant for the Bidens, showing discussions about how to divvy up the compensation and equity in their planned enterprise with communist China, with Biden being labeled the big guy. You've seen a number of journalists, reporters covering the story, including some who should know better declare triumphantly that no document you've released connects the former vice president to this deal. How do you react? I want to simplify this for the American people as much as I can. On May 13th, that email was sent from James Gillier to me. I didn't generate that email. James Gillier generated that email. And in that email, James Gillier goes through intimate detail of what each individual's requests were from a compensation perspective and how the equity in the enterprise would be divvied up. Very important. In that email, there's a statement where they go through the equity. Jim Biden's referenced as, you know, 10% doesn't say Biden, it says Jim. And then it has 10% for the big guy held by H. I 1000% sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden, I met with the former vice president in person multiple times, and I had been meeting and talking with Hunter Biden and, and uh, Jim Biden and Rob Walker and James Gillier. Where the media has tried to hide, and I personally feel it's disgusting, is between that May 13th email and the final document that was executed called Oneida Holdings LLC. In Oneida Holdings LLC, the equity is broken up 20% Hunter Biden, 20% Jim Biden. Well, they're LLCs that represented them. Right. 20% James Gillier, 20% Rob Walker, and 20% me and my investment entity. What I'd ask the American people to read and look at is how from May 13th to the final Oneida document that got executed, did Jim Biden go from a 10% owner to a 20% owner? So what does this all mean? It shows that Joe Biden has been lying when he claims that he took no part in his son's business dealings. In fact, he was intimately involved and may very well be compromised by these business dealings. And guess what? This is all based on the media standards for Trump. Next, during a conversation with Joe Biden, Bob Alinsky is told by Joe to quote, keep an eye on his son and brother. Now keep in mind, this is after Bob Alinsky's initial meeting with Joe Biden, where Hunter Biden introduced him as quote, the individual I told you about that's helping us with the business that we're working on with the Chinese. He's, and this is a company with direct connections to the communist government of China. So he, the former vice president has said he had no knowledge whatsoever of his son's business dealings and was not involved in them at all. But this sounds like direct involvement in them. Yeah, that's a blatant lie. When he states that, that is a blatant lie. So Joe Biden has not denied meeting with you in Los Angeles, correct? Correct. Tell us about the conversation that you had with him. Joe came through the lobby with his security and Hunter um, basically said, hey, give me a second. I'll go over and give me 10 minutes to brief my dad uh, and read him in on things. And so then Hunter and his father and security came through the bar. And uh, obviously I stood up out of respect to shake his hand. And uh, Hunter introduced me as uh, this is Tony, dad, uh, the individual I told you about that's helping us with the business that we're working on and the Chinese. You said that they wanted you to meet Joe Biden as a way to induce you to participate in this deal. You were, you were the actual business guy here who had management experience, deal experience. But it also sounds like Joe Biden was vetting you to some extent. Yes, of course. Like, um, I didn't request to meet with Joe. They requested that I meet with Joe. So Bob Alinsky has a meeting with the Bynes where he is introduced as the guy who's going to run the business. The very next time that Joe Biden sees Bob Alinsky, he pulls him aside and asks him to keep an eye on Hunter and Jim. He just sort of asked me to keep an eye on his son and his brother. Yeah. What, what do you think he meant by that? Um, I think it was conscious of things and, you know, I can't speak for him. Uh, maybe right. I would love for him to go on record. Um, you know, as I referenced earlier, I'm only sitting here because they have not, not only have they not gone on record, they've denied it 
and they've tarred my family name. Why would he say that if this is all fake? And again, it gives another question that the media could be asking Joe Biden. Joe could either tell the truth or he could lie and smear a career Navy officer, which he's already done by calling this all Russian disinformation. And it shouldn't be a surprise because Joe Biden knows that the media's got his back. I mean, we even have journalists at the New York Times cheering on the partisan media cover-up, saying, quote, the gatekeepers appear to have returned after a long absence and a disorienting couple of decades. Essentially, what he's saying there is that he's glad the left is getting dominant control over the flow of information. Or how about Thomas Ridd over at the Washington Post, who said, quote, we must treat the Hunter Biden leaks as if they were a foreign intelligence operation, even if they probably aren't. Apparently, Chairman Schiff w wants anything against his preferred political candidate to be deemed as not real and is using the intelligence community or attempting to use the intelligence community to say there's nothing to see here. This has nothing to do with the intelligence community or Russian disinformation. If it was, I would know that. Um, so to be clear, it's not. There's no probably about it. We know for a fact they aren't. As stated before, the FBI has said it's not. And now we have this guy who actually worked with the Bidens to make this China deal. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share and subscribe. If you enjoy this channel, please consider supporting it. You can find all those links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.